Uh, everybody knows it's not what you know, it's who you know, or at least that's how the cliche goes. But I've got a special guest here, Keith Ferrazzi. A lot of you already know him. Author of two badass books, Never Eat Alone, and the new one, Who's Got Your Back. So let's talk about relationships. Do you believe in that old cliche that uh, human relationships trump almost everything else you can No, it doesn't trump being an idiot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of right. the day, you've got to have a basic competency right. in whatever you do. But um, unfortunately today, basic competency ain't gonna get you there. Two arms, two legs, and even a Harvard MBA isn't gonna get you there. Yeah. The criticality is how are you differentiating yourself in this world? Yeah. And there's no way that somebody else can surpass the differentiation that you have um, in a deep relationship, a trusting, loyal, connected uh, relationship where somebody believes and knows in the heart and soul that you give a damn that yeah. you have their back. Yeah. Does that make sense? For sure, these yeah. two books kind of blend together. One of the most popular books I've ever talked about is you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that yeah. old classic. How do these two books tie together? You know, yeah. this one, a lot of people know as like a premier book on how to learn how to network and Well, this, this book actually is considered um, This Generation's right. How to Win Friends and Influence People, exactly. right? And we recently updated it, interestingly enough, because when it was originally written over uh, about 10 years ago, Facebook didn't exist. Yeah. Um, you know, it started out with me and my, uh, and my Palm Pilot, right? Huh. So the technology, we just realized that it had significantly advanced. At the time, my friend um, Reed Hoffman was just starting LinkedIn. Yeah. And um, today, it's absolutely clear. We should spend a little bit of time talking about that. It's absolutely clear that technology is a great enabler yeah. for your relationship strategy. Right? Mark Zuckerberg's dream of connecting the world is somewhat working. Well, it's actually yeah. happening, right? Yeah. Now, here's, there is a distinction between connecting and relating. Yeah. You obviously have to connect before you can relate, but connection isn't relation. Yeah. And that's where I think a lot of people go awry, and that is that they don't take it sufficiently far enough, and they think that a connection is a relationship. Yeah. The original stuff in the book is all still applied. So what's interesting is, as you may, may know from many other people who've come through here, that somebody says, how long did it take you to write your first book? Somebody asked me that today. And I said, well, 40 years. Because <laughs> this is the culmination of a, a life you know, set of wisdom. Yeah. Um, and then they try to expect you to write your second book in a year yeah. because the first one was so successful. And it actually took me a few years after the first book because I don't like to put out books just because. As yeah. I, you know, a lot of my friends have a business where they got this cadence. And what, what was interesting was this. Um, book number one basically said, um, and it broke a lot of uh, old beliefs about networking. Relationships are key. Your network isn't key. In other words, you can have all the names you want Mm -hmm. in a database, but that's right. not particularly valuable. It, it, whether or not you can pick up the phone and those individuals will smile and be responsive to you, yeah. right? Now, what do you have to do in advance to have that occur? Two real things. Number one is generosity. This book is all about generosity. It's all about leading in your life by being of service to other people. Uh -huh. If you meet somebody, the first thing you should be thinking of is how do I help? Yeah. How do I help? And that's and not the way most people do it. Most, no, most people go, let me go to this Yep. mixer and hand out my cards and see what, who what can I get out of you is yeah. what most people think out of and, that, and, and, and that's the worst and, and or, at, or at best they might be thinking um, I need to connect no you need to serve the second thing you need to do is while you serve you need to be authentic mm -hmm. um, you know in this day and age people don't have time to um, to build a relationship with you people don't think they want to build a relationship with you everybody else is just too damn busy Mm -hmm. So how are you going to arrest their attention and, and give yourself the moment to really build a relationship? It's got to be through service. Mm -hmm. How do I help you? How do I help you? And the more research I've done in advance yeah. of the meeting, I, I say you've got to show up to every meeting with five packets of generosity. Huh. Five things you think you're going to be able to do for this person before you even show up. Yeah. Right? Now, that, through, the, through the conversation process, I might find out that half of them are wrong. I've, I've shown up to people and I've had this great idea. I saw that they were on a board of directors of something. And I said, oh, I really want to introduce you to so-and-so because I saw you had a shared interest in blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, no, I just am forced to do that because my company tells me to. Yeah. All right, check. Not a good packet of generosity, but you go to the next one. Yeah. And then through curiosity, you figure out what you can actually do for somebody. But the second thing is while you're there, you be yourself. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of my time and a lot of the book talking about how I've spent a lot of my life not being myself. Mm -hmm. A lot of my life um, running away from fear and insecurity of being a poor kid in Pittsburgh, going to a rich school, feeling like, don't, like I don't belong in the room, 
and being, you know, bigger than myself, bragging, all the kind of crap that, you know, even though I was highly charismatic and I was a smart kid, etc., I was able to build connections, but I wasn't able to build the kind of intimacy. Yeah. That so do you think the authenticity takes it from just, you know, a fairly deep relationship to that level of intimacy yeah. where like, I like that what you said, where people smile when you text or call. Because there's a lot of people that call me or text, I might have to answer. Yeah. There's very few people that you actually smile. You look like, forward oh, to this. Cool. Oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. There's an emotional resonance. And there's two things. And, and by the way, it's all about generosity. And some of the generosity happens because you're just the kind of person that people like hanging out with. Yeah. Right? That's that authenticity piece. Then there's another level of generosity. It's professional. You know, right. I, when you and I met, we were, we were thinking about ways, and you're the same way. You do this naturally. You're thinking about ways you can be of service. You invited me in here, right? Yeah. I'm being of service to you, but you're definitely being of service to me. And that's a professional level of right. generosity. Yeah. But at the pinnacle, it's that personal level of generosity. Right. Which is if I really understand what you need and what you're about. Like what's really motivated, it's about your kids. It's about um, you know, your, your aspiration for health and fitness and, and whatever it is, whatever really ticks you. Know what's interesting though, is most people, you don't know that about them. Yeah. So there's most salesmen will have clients that they've known for years mm -hmm. that they don't know enough about that right. person to, be able to, to even to be able to serve. Yeah. Why? Because they haven't served sufficiently and they haven't been authentic enough. It's almost like a, like a DNA strand. You, you lead with service and someone's like, oh, well, I'll spend a second with this person. And then while you're spending that second with me, I need to be vulnerable enough. I need to be authentic enough mm -hmm. that you're willing to start sharing real shit about yourself. Yeah. Right? Once you share so real stuff about me. Take. If you're not willing then, to open up, then they're not going to open up. Open. Yeah. But as soon as you give me something about who you are and what you need, I serve you again. Yeah. I, I, I find other ways to be of service or to your kids or to your significant other or, or whatever, to your charity. And then, then you're like, well, shit, I'll spend more time with that person. Yeah. And then when you do, you go even deeper. And at the end of the day, you're having a long, slow dinner over a great bottle of red wine. Yeah. And you're real friends. And you pick up the phone and smile. There's a good, good story. I remember when I was in sales, there was a guy, a salesman who kept reaching out. We were out. always in sales, aren't we? Always. You said we were in sales. Oh, this guy was in, I think it was pharmaceutical sales or something, and he kept reaching out to the CEO. He figured it was the best contact he could make. Guy would never answer the phone mm -hmm. for years, and he read in the article, in an article in the news, that that guy's son had been hit by a car. Yes. So he did a little research, like you said, mm -hmm. found out that that son loved hockey. The salesman happened to know Wayne Gretzky, got Wayne Gretzky to sign a hockey stick. He delivered it to the son's hospital room, and the, the kid was there recovering. And, and uh, sure enough, a week or two later, that home. CEO said, did you send that hockey stick to my son? Let me take you out to dinner. And he ended up doing the deal. So it's like you said, it's that knowing about them. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot, because I talk a lot about mentors and 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 forming these relationships. I did this TEDx talk on the law of 33%, finding people above you. Yeah. One of the most common questions is, how do you find those people? And once you find them, how do you kind of pierce the veil? I've got my own theories, but I'd love to hear what you found worked. Well, finding them is easier than ever. <laughs> it's like, you're, you're younger than I am, but I remember growing up, we had card catalogs. So how, yeah. the, how are you gonna find these people? Right. You know, back in the day uh, of that, today, you know, finding them is not, not difficult. There's a, mm -hmm. everybody you want to get to know, somebody has already curated a list online. Yeah. Um, or if you just do a little bit more of research, it's quite easy. So I don't think finding's as difficult. Okay. Although I have to say that once you're in the universe or sphere, I mean, let's, let's go real for a second. Give, yeah. me, give, me a, give me a space where you like, might want to aspire to spend more time. Well, one of the most common questions I get for entrepreneurs watching, investors, they want to meet a VC, they want Great. to meet a, you know, a tech investor. Great, so one thing I can tell you is that um, you ratchet yourself up. I remember when I was a kid, getting to know a lawyer was a big deal. Yeah. Right, because my dad was a steel worker, yeah. and we didn't know anybody who wasn't blue collar, and someday I wanted to go to college, and getting to know a lawyer was a big deal. Now I don't want to know lawyers, but anyway, it's a yeah. different issue. Um, the, <laughs> now you don't, want, you don't ever hear from a lawyer. Exactly, yeah. but, the, but the idea of of starting low, start with an a, a local angel investor. Who's a, who's a rich person that some friend of yours knows, Yeah, right, that you can spend some time in. I guarantee you that person knows other senior angels and that person probably knows the VCs. Yeah. Once you get to know that individual, then, and, and we call this in the book, warming the cold call, okay. right? You begin where you can approach mm -hmm. 
and you don't start going for John Doerr at Kleiner Perkins, yeah. right? You start with the appropriate people in your sphere of influence where a referral can actually get you in. You develop and you serve until that individual feels comfortable enough to be able to give you another referral and you be able to ratchet your way around. So yeah. that's probably one of the shortest, so the most safe path, maybe not the shortest path. Um, once again, it's about research. Yeah. You, know, you can always catapult to the top if you can find the, the most salient thing that somebody else cares about at that point in time. Yeah. Now, what gets you there? A lot of people don't realize that, that gatekeepers are very powerful. Yeah. Um, most people think of gatekeepers, secretaries, et cetera, as the, as the individual that's stopping me from getting to the person I want to talk to. Well, in actuality, if you get to the quote gatekeeper, that person gives a damn about that their boss. Yeah. They, their job is to make their boss successful. Yeah. Treat that person like an influencer. Yes. Right? Treat that person so don't like. Treat them just like a means to an end. Means treat to an end. You actually, you, an that end. is yeah. your end. Yeah. You want to get to know this individual, find ways to serve that individual so that that individual will give you permission to, be, to hear how you could be of service to their boss. I had, a, um, um, I had an administrative assistant that one day forced me to meet somebody mm. despite me canceling the appointment three times, mm. but they forced me to meet that person because that person had taken them to lunch and given them flowers and candy, taking them to lunch, but more importantly, at that lunch, laid out exactly what he was going to do to make me more successful, and she was absolutely right. I'm so happy I took that appointment yeah. because she had already been clear in her head what that appointment was going to be about. Right? Does yeah. that make sense to you? Yeah, that's great. That's somewhat similar. You know, I always say, you know, Charlie Munger, the great billionaire, says step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. And so yeah. people think, okay, I'm broke or I'm starting, I'm starting my search for investors and I'm gonna go from zero to hero, a hundred. But you know, it's better to just, and, and even the human brain is built that way. They call that the contrast bias. We're happiest when we're creating momentum and our brain can differentiate between this much momentum or this much. So if every week you're making a new contact who's a potential investor, you'll feel good. You'll feel like I'm, even if you're not immediately reaching you know, well, Peter Thiel or something. And like what that. you're trying to do is you're trying to move from individuals who are contacts to evangelists for you, mm. right? right. And the more you invest and the more they care. It's really, I mean, it's, it's really boils down pretty simply to, uh, to two simple words. Find a way to help, find a way to care. Yeah. And if you, uh, you know, I, my dad used to have a great saying, I was talked about it in here, um, and that is that the way to get somebody to like you is to make sure you, they know you care about them. Yeah. And, yes. and I used to do it the opposite way around. I used to try to get people to like me by trying to be liked. Yeah. Like me, like me, you know, just like, look at but me, then like, it's like me. The, it repels. It repels. Yeah. I mean, the energy associated with it is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a significantly antagonistic energy. If on the other hand, the energy is all around, tell me about you. Yeah. Like, tell me, it's like, and even people who are jackasses, um, if you find a way, have, and I, I, I was um, coaching a, an executive the other day, um, just as a, who's also just a friend, and he was explaining somebody who's just a real pain in the ass that he had to go build a relationship with. And I said, you've already screwed yourself. Uh. You've already screwed yourself. And he says, yeah, but this guy, he's got such a reputation, and, and he's been rude to me, and blah, blah. And I said, you've already screwed yourself. If you're walking in there braced for this guy to be a jackass, yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I said, I asked him, I said, have you ever met somebody who was a jackass who's now a friend of yours? Yeah. He goes, yeah. I said, what's the person's name? Mike. I said, great. It's Mike. I want you to walk in that room and I want you to psych yourself right now into seeing Mike sitting in that chair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, you're literally, and all of a sudden he got it. He was like, oh shit, yeah, that's not Larry the jackass, that's Mike the future friend. Because I know I can get by this. I know I can do this and this is gonna be great. And the energy, and even if, even if the guy continues to be a jackass, then I fall back on it. Instead of antagonism embraced for him being a jackass, this is gonna sound maybe bad, but at least feel sorry for the bitch. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. The guy, you're, you're, at least you're like, aw. Yeah. What's it like to be a jackass like that? You don't yeah. say that out loud, by the way, right? Right. But, but you sit it there in your brain. and reframe yeah. it in your brain as saying, oh, I really feel bad that that's the way this guy is. Um, I can be empathetic. Yeah. Right? Empathetic is, is, is a big critical element of building that relationship is through empathy. Yeah. Leaders don't understand that. So the, these concepts of relationships, by the way, are, they aren't just for sales or investment. And that was the switch from this book to this book. Okay. To realize that we've got to treat everybody around us with the same kind of purposeful, authentic, and generous strategy for relationships, even if, and particularly if we're a boss.
Mm. What most people don't understand who are bosses, they think that they have, because of authority, that they have the assumptive relationship. They have okay. the assumptive permission to influence. Right. The assumptive permission. A little bit permission. like uh, Michael Scott on The Office. He yes, exactly. Because he was a manager. Then he, <laughs> people liked him, but it didn't work that people way. People liked him and yeah. they listened to him. Right. The answer is, every single day, you've got a sales call to make on your people. Mm -hmm. And that sales call means you've got to show up with five packets of generosity, and you've got to show up with authenticity and empathy, and you've got to build every relationship. Do you right? see it like that proverbial bank you're building up? Each of these are deposit kind uh, of The thing. answer is yes. However, what I really worry about is when people start thinking of a balance sheet per person, okay. then they start thinking of it as a transaction. I've deposited five coins. I'm right. expecting now it's some back. Term, yeah. And that's a bad idea. You really have to think of your life in this, flat, in this strategy and philosophy. You've got to walk around the world being of service, period. Yeah. Right? And if somebody isn't of service back, at some point, you're fi it's fine to walk away and to realize that this isn't a good place to prioritize your investment. Yeah. Right? That's fine. But don't ever do it begrudgingly. Don't ever do it resentfully. Um, and don't ever expect. Don't ever expect. I mean, I know it's a, it's a different shift. It's a very, it's, a, it's actually a spiritual shift. It's a spiritual shift to show up and to be of service. Hmm. It's a spiritual shift to show up and be vulnerable, empathetic, and authentic. And it, the good news is it's just one of these wonderful truisms that if you, if you do this, you will be successful and you will be happier. Yeah. There are very few entrepreneurs that are really happy out there. Yeah. Most of us, and I count myself among you know, entrepreneurs, um, have chosen the different path because um, you know, for, for lots of reasons, and you probably have more experience on understanding the entrepreneur mind um, than I do. It's not my, I work in the Fortune 500 predominantly. But um, what I can say is that most people that I know who have chosen the entrepreneurial path had some degree of scarcity, some degree of some chip right. on their shoulder, something that has driven them to yeah. go in that direction. Yeah. And they're all a little bit touched, like yeah. myself, right? <laughs> and, and they're not that happy a lot. Yeah. And the well, great- happiness is elusive. It's an elusive cat, that's it, what I say. You it, try to pet it and it runs away. Yeah, but what I can tell you is that if you're, and a lot of that reason is because the entrepreneur's energy is a little skitzy and it scares the cat. Right. Yeah. But if you have a different energy, if you have a generous energy, if you have an authentic energy, it, you attract people. Yeah. Better it is, people. It is amazing. It's only been in my 40s, to be honest with you, that I've started to live, you know, I see my buddy's book, Peter DeMondis there. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I see bold, but abundance. I've started to live my life assuming abundance. Yeah. And, and if you live your life with the assumption of abundance, and that then allows you to lead with generosity without counting. Right, because you're coming from a place you're where coming you, from the place you're, where you you've got a not, rich bank account internally. Rich, and and yeah. all you're doing is being generous and it's a lovely thing to do, Yeah. right? And if you're gonna live that life, it's amazing that sooner or later your mind, your energy shifts. Yeah. You know, it's like, and then things start to attract you. People start to attract you. Deals start to attract you. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've never been so rich in deal flow than when I stopped being so scarcity oriented and trying to collect it. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? For sure. Yeah. You know, uh, Dr. David Buss, who's one of the preeminent evolutionary psychologists, he told me, he said, Ty, the most cutting edge science that they've been researching is what's called WTRs, mm. welfare trade-off ratios or reciprocal altruism. And so at some level, this is how the human brain at, at it, from a scientific standpoint is built. We're looking, welfare trade-off ratios, we're looking for people that care about us in a ratio that's healthy. And like you said, it may be- Not stalker-like, right? But Right, not stalker, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, when you have a welfare trade-off ratio where you're always chasing, AKA yeah. the stalker, yeah. um, that means they're not reciprocating back, so you must pull away. And, and that ties into game theory, you know, Nash. There's Nobel Prize winner that found uh, that it's called tit for tat. Mm -hmm. So tit for tat is reciprocation back. Yeah. But what's interesting, which I think you would like, in the tit for tat, where you basically do back, like it's two computers dueling, they say you should start out nice and generous. This yeah. is the game that- Well, you know what it's actually doing. There's two things, and I wanna, I wanna talk about how you actually practice that. What, it, what the starting out nice does, it's, it's anthropological. It quiets the reptilian brain. 
The reptilian brain is, is controlling your, as you well know, the fight flight mechanism. Mm -hmm. And if you enter a situation and you're, you're naturally these days tribally a tribe of one. People mm -hmm. are running around, they're behaving like a tribe of one. Anything else that's not me is a, is, and us is them. Yeah. So the way you create us is that first ovation, that authentic, that empathy, that vulnerability, that letting your guard down, that being of service, it creates us. Yeah. And once you're us, you have a lot of permission. Yeah. Right? People don't fight you when you're us. Yeah, they're an ally. You the, create allies. The yeah. problem that we found is 50% of Americans, 50% um, of Americans say that no one has their back. Hmm. And when you look into that, you realize that, that to train the brain, you don't train it through knowledge, you train it through experience. Mm -hmm. If you don't have experience having a few people around you that have your back, who you can be vulnerable with, let your guard down with, Who's, who are generous to you, you're generous to them, you're truthful, you're candid. The real essence of core relationships, we call it intimacy, generosity, candor, and accountability. Intimacy, generosity, candor, and accountability. If you don't have a few people in your life that have your back, yeah. then it's very difficult to go out in the world practicing accelerated intimacy, generosity, candor, and accountability if you don't have the practice going yeah. deep. I agree, yeah. So this gives you the practice, uh -huh. and this allows you to manifest it at scale. Huh. And even though I wrote the book, so this is almost the internal, and this is the multiplier. Exactly, and and so. you've got to have this to do this well. Yeah. Unless you happen to be one of these lucky sons of bitches who carries this with you naturally. Yeah. There are very few people. Uh, Most entrepreneurs are not them, yeah. right? They're not safe. Steve comfortable. Jobs definitely wasn't that. He wasn't one Anybody of those who gets fired from their own company, right? The Twitter guys are falling apart. Well, this is awesome. Well, Keith, thank you for being here. Make sure you check out. Never eat alone. This is on my recommended list. I need. To, I haven't read Who's Got Your Back, but I will. Uh, especially after this conversation was great. Uh, check out the books. Reach you. What's the best? Facebook, Twitter. Well, uh, I, Facebook is easy. Um, yeah. Twitter is great. But uh, if you're interested in a dialogue, uh, yeah. you know, around Yoy and that yeah. kind of stuff, just uh, go on to um, KeithRazi.com and you can just uh, message us right there, and somebody will get back to you. Awesome. Keith, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. This is great.